The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. Any questions or concerns about what is said should be directed to the show host, whose information will be provided upon request. Welcome back to uh, Let's Talk Money 2020. Today is July 10th, 2020. Uh, I want to get right to it. Um, There's a lot of things that are going on, as we all know in the world. You know, COVID, uh, the the violence towards uh, blacks, and in particular black men, by police and and others. Um, And I want to talk about something that is a step in the right direction here in the state of Maryland. Um, as you know, we have a I have a CP a CPA firm here in in Maryland, Greenbelt, Maryland. Uh, so today, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about things that really pertain to residents of the state of Maryland. Um, but I, I think there have they have similar uh, things that I'm going to talk about in, in other states, a few other states. So you might want to check your state just in case you don't live in the state of Maryland. But um, like I said before, there's a lot going on as, as far as the brutality against uh, blacks and you, you see the rise of uh, certain groups that really are really trying to stop our rise, which that can never happen, um, but good luck with that. But um, this, this is a step that, that we see government actually working for the people. It's not a giant step, but this, the, what I'm going to talk about today is, is a step in the right direction. So I don't know whether you all knew this, but in the state of Maryland, if you actually donate to one of the Maryland historically black colleges, you can get a tax credit on your tax return, your Maryland tax return. I don't know whether uh, many of us actually have, have, have known that. This is a, a law that was passed late in uh, July, I think it was July or August of 2019. Uh, so it was kind of late to really put everything on the 19 tax returns, but this is something that you could do for your 2020 tax return. Um, and this is a, a much needed, um, I guess, a, a boost of uh, cash to the historically black colleges because they're probably taking a, a pretty good hit here uh, when it comes to COVID. You know, of course, you know, they don't have the full activities they used to have on campus. Maybe enrollment might be down. Um, uh, certainly, you know, they don't have people coming to come into classes. So uh, then you got the, you know, everyone is actually trying to do the right thing when it comes to um, the, the, I guess, the racial relations in this country. So it comes at a right time. I got to give uh, uh, Governor Hogan uh, big time credit for this because he signed this in, in 2019. And who would ever think when he signed this that this is the, the type of uh, life that we're living now. Um, so uh, this this is this is a great step in, in, in the right direction. So you know, it we have to really consider what is an endowment. Um, when, when I read this, I, I said, well, well, wait a minute. Let, let's let's really try to understand what an endowment actually does. Um, you know, I had a, a good idea with, with an endowment, what an endowment does, but a lot of times we should actually look up words to get the, the full meaning of what an, an endowment does and, and, and why is it so important for historically black colleges. So what I did was I actually uh, went online and, and I did some searching as far as what what really constitutes a endowment. So. If you don't mind, I'm going to read this to you. You might not be able to see it that well on the screen. So an endowment is an an aggregation of assets invested by a college or university to support its educational mission in perpetuity. That's the key thing. It's really to really invest for the future, and it really should have no end. So 
um, when it comes to the future of our children this is something that you might not we might not see the immediate benefits from but because they're they're accumulating these funds these funds are growing so that as time goes on the fund gets bigger and we can actually help the children of the future um, this is one thing that we have to be focused on we have to leave something so that when we die there's something in place for our children so let me continue uh, an institution's endowment actually comprises hundreds and hundreds or thousands of individual endowments. An endowment allows donors to transfer their private dollars to public purposes for the assurance that their gifts will serve these purposes for as long as the institution continues to exist. And we want our historically black colleges to continue to exist. Um, and that's one of the things, if I could go back that's one of the things that I would change. I would have gone directly from high school to a historically black college. And this is one of the mistakes that, that I made uh, coming up um, that I wished I could go back and I would definitely have gone to a historically black college. There's a lot of benefits behind going to a historically black, black college. Um, the network that you, that you build, um, the sense of pride, um, the teachers and everybody really wants you to succeed. It's just a different quality of education. Now, now for everybody, I'm not saying it's, it's you know, it's, it'll be a good solution for everybody. Um, but for me, looking back, it would have been so much better, I think, if I went to a historically black college. So an endowment represents a, a compact between a donor and, and an institution. It links past, current, and future generations. That's the key. It links everyone together, and we are all contributing to something for our future. Um, it allows, it also allows an institution to make commitments far into the future, knowing that resources to meet those commitments will continue to be available. So this is a great thing. And it's a, it, I, I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention because this is something that we have to be focused on. And the thing is, it doesn't make a difference how, how large your donation is or how small your donation is. Um, you can you can there's a potential that you can get uh, 25 percent um, of that donation as a tax credit so I'll get into that in the next slide so here are the specifics of the the tax credit um, you can get a 25 percent tax credit for the donation that you that you give on the state level um, and it has to be made to Maryland um, black colleges so if you're talking about you know black college in a different state um, you will not qualify. So you, you have to make sure it's a historically black college um, in, in the state of Maryland. And I'll give you the list of the historically black colleges that this, um, this, this uh, provision is actually written for. So let me give you an example. If you have a uh, $1,000 donation, um, you can take a 25%, uh, a, a $250 credit on a $1,000 donation. So it's 25% of whatever you donate. So if you donated $100, you get a $25 credit. Um, now there is an application process and, and you have to go through um, a procedure to actually get it done, uh, but that credit is available. All right, so here are the schools that, that you can actually donate to. There's Bowie State, Coppin State, Morgan State and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. I'm from the Eastern Shore, so that's near and dear to my heart. So, um, uh, so these these are the schools. Again, they have to be Maryland schools that you donate to, and you have to be a Maryland resident to actually take advantage of this. So, um, before before I go on, um, there are so, there are some limitations, but this is this is critical because um, as I as I was stating before the broadcast we have to begin to actually donate to our uh, black colleges because um, what happens is our black colleges get too dependent on government funding. So government funding presents a problem in that they can control who can go to your college, what you can teach, who can teach, who can visit. They just have too much control when it comes to our black colleges. So. Um, it's a great thing that they've actually contributed because without their contributions, they probably could not exist. But the reality is, 
if you want a truly, truly black experience where black people determine what's tart, who t who's tart, who attends, then we have to fund those endeavors. So again, I have to give credit to Governor Hogan for actually signing this, this bill and making this possible. Um, so um, there are some stipulations here. So um, the, the maximum that the state of Maryland will allow this provision for is $240,000. So the fund, once it gets to $240,000, that's it. They're not going to let people to uh, let people actually donate any more than the two hundred and forty thousand for right now. So that means sixty k to the four, to the four schools. So in the case that two hundred and forty thousand dollars is not funded, then, then then actually what would happen is that money will get rolled over into the next year. So in the next year, if they do meet the two hundred and forty thousand dollar goal, whatever that was. That was um, well. Actually, if, if they did not meet the goal this year, they can actually roll that into the next year. So um, I think my my personal my personal um, opinion on this. I think that we can give more than two hundred and forty thousand dollars. And I think again, once we meet that two hundred and forty thousand dollars, I think we should be contacting our our, our our governor, our Congress people, our local community, our local community leaders and basically tell them, hey, look, we want to continue this program. We want to fund more of this program. Because, I mean, the thing is, we got to give our money to somebody, right? So why not give it to historically black colleges? Okay, so um, the credit expires in at 12, uh, 12-31-2023. And like I said before, you have to complete an application to get it. The reason why you got to do the application is, is because um, there's a funding limit, as I mentioned before, is 240000 uh, So once they meet that $240,000 point, then they're going to, you know, they're going to say, hey, look, you can't actually put it on your tax return. So you're going to have to get approval to actually put it on your tax return. But right now, this is a little known act. Not many people know about it. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring more awareness to this so that, that we can exceed that 240000 and ask for more. I mean, no, there's, no, there's no reason why we shouldn't be, you know, ha have $5 million, $10 million, um, in the state of Maryland that would go to actually fund historically black colleges where they can put it into a pool and divvy it out. Again, if you put it in, a, in an endowment, um, um, you can't, it's, not like, it's not like it becomes money that people can waste. When, how an endowment works is um, you put the money into a pool, um, and these in pool, these this pool actually invest in, in, in certain investments, and they get a return. And this money just keeps growing, and those, those that money that that they actually um, that the that the um, the fund makes is money they can actually use for scholarships or development or whatever at the school. But the 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 nucleus or the corpus or whatever you donate has to stay in that endowment so it's not like the money can be wasted it goes into a fund and that fund must be used only to generate more money to, to, to take care of current needs in the future so um, this is a great way for us to actually um, donate to the schools we don't have to we don't have to worry about the money going to ways that we don't have to worry about you know we just naturally distrustful of one another so we don't have to worry about where this money is going. By law, it has to go to actually support the school's mission. So why not do it? Why not jump on it? I'm writing my check. I'm, I'm writing several checks this year uh, to make sure that we support our historically black colleges. Look, if you look at the, um, the people that have graduated um, from historically black colleges, they can be you know, people in the news that are popular people, but they don't necessarily have to be popular people. There are plenty, there are plenty of business owners in this area, the the Washington D.C. area, that have actually um, graduated from historically black colleges, and they're making plenty of money. They have very successful businesses, and in the future, I'm going to introduce a, a few people that I know of personally that have um, graduated from historically black colleges and have done extremely well. So. Um, I, I think this is a great thing. Again, there's an application process, so make sure that we, we have this, uh, you get the application done. You can actually um, find the application online. You just 
Google the um, the um, tax credit for historically black colleges in the state of Maryland, and it'll just come right up. So, um, so, so once again, we have to push for more funding, more programs like this. Um, so having money come our way for for our children, our, our future is not a bad thing. Um, so we're going to have to contact the governor, contact you know our, um, our Congress people, our our county executives. This is a program that we want to continue. We want to keep growing. Um, so I was so excited to to actually talk about this today. Um, I I think that we'll be missing a tremendous opportunity if we don't donate to these programs. Again, you don't have to donate a lot of money. You know, just donate whatever you can um, to these endowment funds. I went online and I started looking at some of the endowment funds for the four colleges. There's plenty of information online about these, about these funds, but if you can't find what you're looking for, just call the school up and ask them how can you donate? How can you donate to historically black colleges? So with that, you know, I, I hope that we, um, we just have reached deep into our pocketbooks. I know I am. Um, and, and basically give. Give to our, our children's future. They're brilliant black minds that actually go to these schools and they do great things. I know, I know quite a few people myself that have graduated from historically black colleges. And like I said before, they're doing extremely, extremely well. You cannot, you cannot um, beat the network of people that you meet in college and you have those same networks throughout your, your life. Um, you can go anywhere. And when I say anywhere, you can go anywhere in the world and you can find um, uh, alumni from historically black colleges. If you need jobs, if you need resources later on in life after you graduate, you can call on these resources. I've seen it done over and over and over. Um, I was at a, a fundraiser uh, for uh, Miss Also Brooks uh, before she became the county executive, and uh, um, a client of mine invited me to the fundraiser at his house, and Judge Mathis was there, and I was like, "Well, how, how does Judge Mathis, Judge Mathis, come to the fundraiser?" Oh, he said that was, that was he's a frat brother of mine, and he went to a historically black black college, so. Um, you, you, you just, you just, we just have to make sure that we, we understand the importance of supporting the historically black colleges. So with that, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of put a pin on this and, um, until next week, um, stay safe, um, stay blessed and I'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Troy Emery. Here at TD Emory & Associates, we offer a wide variety of business tax services for small and large companies, including corporations and partnerships, nonprofits, and real estate taxation. Also, we offer audits, compilations, and reviews. Let our knowledgeable staff at TD Emory & Associates help you optimize your tax benefits today. Dependable, accurate, trustworthy, TD Emory & Associates. Dependable, accurate, trustworthy, T.D. Emory & Associates. What is this? The IRS? We know that your tax preparation requires more than just the basics. Hi, I'm Troy Emory, and I've spent my entire professional career helping taxpayers in a variety of tax issues. Let us show you how to confront and solve tax issues with every viable option under the law. Call the